Hi everyone, welcome back to Mission Japan. In this series, we talk about various embassies that occupy the diplomatic landscape in Tokyo. Today, I'm honored to welcome the Russian ambassador, Mikhail Garutsin. Welcome. Thank you, nice to meet you, pleasure to be here. It's really great that you're here. Mm -hmm. Russia and Japan has a, such a long history. They are close, they're very close neighbors, mm -hmm. and the relationship between them is so critical. But the, the pace of negotiations that have been going on recently mm -hmm. with regard to the Kuril Islands is really a hot topic. Mm -hmm. But what I'd like to talk about first of all is the relationship between the nation of Japan and the nation of what is now the, the Russian Federation, mm -hmm. where it started and how we got to this wonderful piece of land that you have over at Ikura. Well, uh, if we talk about the origin of uh, the Russian-Japanese relations, I, I would say that uh, the first information or first knowledge of Japan had arrived to Russia, I think, uh, in the mid of the 17th century or in the second part of the 17th uh, century. Uh, this uh, knowledge uh, was say, broadcasted to Russia uh, by Russian diplomats who would visit China uh, and uh, who would know some information about Japan. One of these uh, diplomats was Nikolai Spafari, uh, who visited China in the, I think, in the 80s, uh, 80s of uh, the 17th century. And he, he uh, was one of the first Russian uh, nationals uh, who brought some information uh, of Japan uh, to uh, our country. And, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but at that time, Japan was still in the Satoku um, yes, period, uh, right? If, if you uh, came on, if you fell off the boat uh, and landed on this country, uh, you were yeah. killed immediately. And uh, the other kind of interesting thing about this is that this um, foray did not begin from the south, as it did with the Portuguese or the mm -hmm. uh, other countries, mm -hmm. but actually from the north, isn't it? Well, uh, it, it, uh, what you say now, it happened later, a bit later. But uh, my, uh, the, the Russian diplomats who uh, first uh, learned about Japan, learned information about Japan, they, they didn't visit Japan that time. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned above, they visited China. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, he, they uh, obtained uh, first information. Uh, I agree that Japan was uh, that time in a period of Sakoku, which means uh, closed country, uh, and uh, uh, the Russian nationals could not reach right. Japan that time. But uh, in uh, the 18th century, some of the Japanese fishermen uh, sailors or traders, uh, they uh, they happened to arrive to Russia uh, because uh, the storm or some weather disaster uh, in the high seas threw them to on the Russian shore. Okay, that and would be up yes, north. yes, and they were saved by the Russian people mm -hmm. uh, there, and some of them let's say, uh, started to live in Russia. Some of them, uh, as foreign nationals from a country which uh, Russia didn't know about, uh, they were received even by the Russian emperors. Wild times. For, yes, for, in, for instance, a, a Japanese uh, national, whose name, uh, according to the, legion, uh, to the, to the archives, uh, was Dembei, uh, was uh, received by Peter the Great back in uh, 1703, uh, in Moscow, and after that, this uh, Japanese uh, man, De Mr. Dembe, uh, started to run a Japanese, first ever Japanese school, Japanese language school in uh, Russia, and uh, that is how the studying uh, Japanese language uh, had started in mm -hmm. Russia uh, more than three centuries ago. Then uh, there is a famous story uh, described by uh, Mr. Yasushi Inoue, a famous Japanese author, uh, in his renowned book, Dreams of Russia. Uh, it is about the 90s of uh, the 18th century, when uh, Daikoku Yakodayu, a Japanese, uh, a Japanese trader, uh, a, a Japanese businessman, let's say, <laughs> in, in modern terms, uh, also was, let's say, 
forced to uh, arrive to Russia uh, because uh, his ship uh, met uh, a very, very strong storm mm -hmm. uh, in high seas. So uh, he went, he came to Russia, he lived in Russia for a while, and then uh, Mr. Adam Laxman, uh, a special envoy of the Empress Ekaterina the Great, brought him and one more Japanese national who was with him uh, to the city of Nemoro back in uh, 1792 uh, to give back, to, 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 to return them back to their home country and to try to establish relations with Japan. But that time, uh, though he, he, he uh, left Mr. Kodayu and his associate uh, in Japan, uh, he uh, failed to establish relations mm -hmm. with Japan because of this uh, policy of the Japanese government. Uh, and finally, the relations between Russia and Japan were officially established uh, back in 1855 when uh, Admiral Putyatin, a special envoy of the Russian Emperor Nicholas I, signed uh, a treaty uh, with the, the Japanese government in the city of Shimoda, Shizuoka Prefecture right. uh, currently. Uh, uh, the first ever diplomatic mission of Russia in Japan uh, was established in 1858 in the city of Hakodate. It was a consulate. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the first uh, Russian head of diplomatic mission in Japan was Mr. Iosif Goshkevich. By the way, he was one of the members of Putyatin, Putyatin's mission. Uh, so, that is how our relations uh, started. Then, back in the uh, 1870s, uh, Russian diplomatic mission, first consulate again, arrived to Tokyo. And there, were, there, has been, there have been several attempts to buy, to purchase a piece of land, to uh, build a building uh, for a mission, for our diplomatic facility. In Edo? Uh, in Edo, yes, in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. th that time Edo, you're right. Uh, oh, maybe Tokyo, because in 1868 okay. it was uh, named uh, like to uh, Tokyo. Uh, it changed uh, the, the name uh, to Tokyo. And uh, finally, uh, we received uh, a piece of land from the Japanese government in the Kasumigaseki area. According to the story, uh, I, I, maybe I'm, uh, I'm not aware 100% correctly, 100% fully, but uh, the first ever Russian embassy in Japan first was located uh, uh, on the, in the area where uh, the Ministry of Finance of Japan is located now. Okay. And exactly because uh, the Japanese government mm -hmm. uh, planned to build Japanese government uh, facilities in that area, uh, we were given, uh, I mean, I think it was the Soviet embassy, who was given uh, a piece of land uh, in uh, Minato ward, a piece of land in uh, Mamiya Nazaka, in Nazabudai. And uh, that is exactly where we are uh, residing now. Uh, that time it was a four-story building, as, as far as I remember. This is over in uh, Minatoku, yes, over by Minatoku, the, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Tokyo Town. Tokyo Town, near Tokyo Town, now near Tokyo Town. Mm -hmm. And since that period, uh, this, uh, facility, this, this land, uh, this premise, uh, is the diplomatic facility uh, of the Soviet Union, then now Russian, uh, the Russian Federation. Mm -hmm. uh, current, uh, our current building uh, was built in, uh, in mid-70s mm -hmm. of uh, the 20th uh, century. Uh, we have two buildings, one for uh, our office and one for as uh, uh, an apartment for uh, our staff. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a reception hall. We also have a, sort of a club with a conference hall. We also have our school facility there. We mm -hmm. have a full-fledged Russian high school uh, there for uh, embassy staff's uh, children and the children of Russian na nationals uh, living uh, here in uh, Tokyo. Uh, we have also uh, our counselor, counselor section on that premise. Okay. We have a small sport facility like volleyball or mini football. Uh, grounds and uh, fields, and also uh, a swimming pool. Okay. 
It sounds great. Can I ask you a couple of questions about the land? So initially you were over in Kasumigaseki. Mm -hmm. This was a piece of land that you purchased or that was uh, loaned to to the the government. Do you I, know? I think uh, we uh, uh, at that time uh, we we received this land from the Japanese government okay. and uh, we built uh, there uh, two story wooden uh, structure villa, two story building right. for um, our diplomats to 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 work and leave. Okay, mm -hmm. and then from there, since mm -hmm. Kasumigaseki yeah. was going under mm -hmm. uh, massive mm -hmm. reconstruction. Mm -hmm. You found a piece of property, or they introduced mm -hmm. you a piece of property over by the Tokyo Tower, well, and that's where you are right uh, now. As, as far as I know, we were introduced. Okay. Uh, this piece of land by the Japanese government at that time, and well, we were happy to, to receive it because we had to to to, uh, to have our facility mm -hmm. uh, and to uh, promote relations with Japan. And the, slightly after that, uh, it was a decision of a Japanese government. Uh, that, as, as far as I know, that declared this piece of land the property of the Soviet Union. Okay, so it was uh, either gifted or uh, there was an exchange of maybe property uh, in were, Moscow well, for... No, no, no. Uh, I think we were not gifted or we were not uh, changing something for something. It was, uh, in, in my view, it was a general decision. It was a decision of the Japanese government to, let's say, to recognize pieces of land possessed by... Uh, foreign mission, certain mm -hmm. foreign missions, including the Soviet foreign mission, as their property. Okay. It was, uh, un let's say, universal decision. Okay. When the, the embassy was first occupied, mm -hmm. they constructed a very nice building there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was by a Russian architect that mm -hmm. uh, stood for, for several dozens of years. Yes, it stood. Uh, uh, I uh, cannot describe it in, in uh, describe now it in uh, in a detailed way manner. But uh, well, it was it was a good building that, uh, as far as I understand, uh, has uh, uh, existed from the early thirties to mm -hmm. the mid of sixties mm -hmm. uh, of the last century. And then we have, but but you know. Earthquakes, etc. It 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 causes damage, right. and that is why uh, the Soviet government at that time decided to build a new mm -hmm. a, a new building or new buildings uh, for the embassy and its staff. Great, and that's what we are what we do have now. And, and that's where you also reside. That's where the mm -hmm. the residence is as well. Yes, my residence is also inside the embassy. One of the ironic things about the placement mm -hmm. of the the embassy is mm -hmm. that it's kissed right up against. The Tokyo American Club. Yes, and yes. there's all there's it's for just, many years. Yes, for, for decades actually. Yes, right. Uh -huh. And that that piece of property, we're going to actually do a, a special on that piece of property too. Mm -hmm. But uh, we were talking about the foreign minister earlier, and mm -hmm. it turns out that that those pieces of land mm -hmm. initially belonged to the the Kono family. Mm. Oh so, really? Yes. Oh. So. Um, it's, it's interesting, isn't That's it? That's what I didn't know, yes. frankly. Thank and, you. and that piece uh -huh. of property, it's a, a slight diversion, I apologize, mm. but um, it was first the Foreign Press Club, mm. and then they gave that up, and the mm -hmm. Tokyo American Club, which was probably oh. in Madanuchi area, uh -huh. came in and, mm -hmm. and established a, a presence there. So uh -huh. it's, it's got a nice, rich history, too, but yeah. it's just ironic <laughs> that the Americans and the Russians are just uh -huh. right next to each other. Well, at least uh, there we are good neighbors. Yes. <laughs> but you're not a member of the American Club. No. Right? No. So that must... I, I, I'm not sure that, uh, that, that, that Ambassador of Russia uh, should be a member of American Club. Um, <laughs> but you need some place to go, you know? Let right. your hair down. There are many places to go in Tokyo. Yes, that's true. That's true. T Tokyo is a There are big clubs city. which I'm a member of. <laughs> mm -hmm. One of the other things that's so interesting about this particular piece of land is that it's, mm -hmm. it's sandwiched in between Ikura Kosaten and Ikura Kokan, mm -hmm. these major intersections, mm -hmm. and from time to time they are invaded by these trucks with the loudspeakers. Uh -huh. And they're only coming there because of the embassy to mm -hmm. complain and to shout and to mm -hmm. make a, a huge commotion. Mm -hmm. And so the intersections are frequently closed from time mm -hmm. to time and it causes a huge commotion. Mm -hmm. But this, this happens uh, with regularity, doesn't it? It must be a, a a real irritation, it would be for me. Well, actually, it depends on the period uh, uh, which we speak about. Mm -hmm. For instance, well, there were times uh, when uh, these kind of activity of uh, right-wing organizations, of radical organizations of Japan, uh, was, was very, let's say, frequent uh, and uh, regular. Uh, now, I would say that, well, to compare with what I uh, witnessed here, for instance, 30, 30, 
five years ago, so to six years ago, when I first arrived as a as an embassy uh, it's staff, a little staff calmer member. Now, uh, now this uh, activity is reduced mm -hmm. uh, greatly, but sometimes uh, these right wingers, uh, let's say, conduct uh, their activity. Of course, uh, we do not agree with the slogans uh, they shout. We are not happy at all uh, about uh, what you just mentioned. Uh, I mean, the blocking streets, etc., right. etc. Cetera, et cetera. Uh, we are sure that it's not only the Russian embassy who suffers from it, because there are people living in the area, That's Japanese right. people, foreign people, who also uh, face some difficulties because of uh, this kind of activity. Yeah. Right. Can we talk about you just a little bit, if you don't mind? Mm -hmm. um, I looked at your biography and I mm -hmm. noticed that as soon as you finished mm -hmm. university, mm -hmm. you joined the Foreign Service yes. and your first posting was here in Tokyo. Yes. You were 22 years old, 23 years old? Uh, I was 23 at that time. That's, a, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. And you're a career diplomat. You've, yes. you've had three postings here. This yes. is your, your third posting. Yes. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you so much. It's, yeah. it's you know, uh, for a long-term resident, and mm -hmm. I think for many Japanese too, Thank you so much. to see you, to see how active you are Thank in you the so community much. and on TV, I think mm -hmm. you're doing such a great job. And also talking about this this issue mm -hmm. with the, the Kuril Islands mm -hmm. and uh, the discussions that are going on. Mm -hmm. You know, it strikes me that uh, Mr. Putin and Mr. Abe mm -hmm. have a, a, a relatively good mm -hmm. relationship. Mm -hmm. um, they have met more than uh, 23 times yeah, over the last... 25 times, to be uh, correct. <laughs> over the last couple of years, mm -hmm. and that is that is hugely significant. Mm -hmm. And we have been in anticipation of reaching some sort of an accord, and mm -hmm. the last negotiations that that made, were made public mm -hmm. were, well, we're, you know, you might mm -hmm. be able to get two. Okay, well, maybe we'll get two. Mm -hmm. how, how, how is this going to, mm -hmm. to work? Mm -hmm. But it seems like we're just again stuck again. Mm -hmm. There seemed to be a little bit of hopeful mm -hmm. um, progress and then mm -hmm. it, it just kind of stopped. Can you give us a little bit of insight on where we are right now and what the prognosis is? Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, Timothy, I, I would like uh, to describe uh, the subject we discuss with our Japanese partners and friends, not as Kuril Islands, uh, but as a peace treaty issue, Okay. which in its meaning is much broader uh, than uh, the issue you uh, mentioned. It is, it is amazing uh, that yeah. ev even now the peace treaty has not been signed. A lot of people don't uh, quite grasp what that means, yeah. but it is very huge. Please be sure that uh, the absence of a peace treaty between Russia and Japan, and Japan doesn't mean a state of war between our countries, oh, sure. because the state of war was seized back in 1956, 1956 Six? when uh, the Soviet Union and Japan signed a joint declaration of uh, the Soviet Union and Japan, which first seized the state of war between right. the two countries, uh, re-established uh, peace, and, uh, uh, and acknowledged established the... diplomatic relations, right. and stipulated uh, that uh, both countries will continue uh, negotiate, peace treaty negotiations to conclude a peace treaty. Mm. Uh, th th this is the starting point. And, uh, since that, well, there was a very long process of dialogue, etc., uh, etc., et and finally, uh, due to time limits, I cannot elaborate about this, but uh, finally, uh, last November in Singapore, uh, on the sidelines side of the East Asian Summit, uh, President Vladimir Putin and Prime Minister uh, Shinzo Abe uh, agreed uh, to speed up peace treaty negotiations uh, on the basis of uh, the above-mentioned uh, joint uh, declarations of the Soviet Union mm -hmm. and Japan. Uh, people uh, often write an equal mark between uh, th that joint declaration and uh, islands and so-called islands issue, mm -hmm. saying that, oh, uh, declaration stipu stipulated uh, that uh, Shikotan and Habamai um, uh, will be uh, maybe transferred, maybe passed uh, to Japan. Uh, but I would like to uh, draw your attention to some very, very important uh, aspects. 
First, uh, if we talk about uh, speeding up uh, negotiations, uh, peace treaty negotiations on the basis of peace treaty uh, of uh, the joint declaration, and if we talk well in a broader way uh, about further promotion of the Russian-Japanese uh, relations on the basis of the uh, joint declaration, we uh, should not focus only on one article uh, of uh, this uh, document. Uh, namely the uh, article that stipulates this or that certain things about uh, the islands. Uh, we also, I, I think, uh, I believe that we also always should always remember uh, the article first, for instance, uh, of, the, of that uh, joint declaration, which stipulates that the relations of good neighborship and friendship, friendly and good neighbor relations, are established between Russia and Japan. And that is also, or first of all, a starting point mm -hmm. uh, of our relations. And uh, what we mean uh, by saying that is uh, that, as President Putin stressed it uh, at the news conference after negotiations with Mr. Abe uh, last January in Moscow, uh, we uh, think that uh, both sides should work uh, on uh, creation conditions for seeking mutually acceptable solution of the peace treaty issue, a solution which would be accepted and would be supported uh, by, by, people, by the people, by right? the people of Russia, by the people of Japan. Yes. That is the task. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking frankly. Uh, for instance, participation of Japan in uh, anti-Russian sanctions uh, baselessly imposed by the United States of America and its allies right. uh, under a false pretext of uh, Crimea issue is, does not correspond to friendly and good neighborly relations uh, which are established by the Joint Declaration. So, uh, if we talk about joint declaration, we must consider it as a whole, uh, without taking mm -hmm. this or that formulation from this uh, document. Mm -hmm. That is why we, and if we read this document correctly, uh, with attention, uh, we will understand uh, the meaning of the words that uh, the transfer of uh, Shikotan and Habomai uh, will be realized after signing a peace treaty. So the first step is to sign a peace treaty. Mm -hmm. It's the first point. Second point is that if we talk about peace treaty and further relations, further development of relations between Russia and Japan, um, it is needed to settle at least three, uh, let's say, th three packages of issues. First is uh, recognition by Japan of the results of the Second World War, including the Russian sovereignty over the Kuril Islands. This is not any, it's not a kind of a condition that we set. It's a common sense of present-day international relations because they are based on the international the law codified, yes. first of all, right. in the UN, uh, UN Charter, which recognizes uh, the, the, the uh, legal, legal status and legitimizes mm -hmm. uh, the results of the Second World War. It's the first point. Second is that uh, our concerns coming from uh, the uh, functioning of the U.S.-Japan uh, military, military alliance right. should be also settled. And we have a lot of questions with regard to this. Sure. Uh, my third point would be that uh, the relations between Russia and Japan uh, should be uh, elevated to a qualitatively new level uh, because we have a huge potential for that. For instance, uh, now our volume of trade is about 20 billion of U.S. dollars uh, which is good, and uh, uh, our trade grew about 20% last year. But still, 
uh, it uh, does not reach the record high, record high level of our trade uh, that we enjoyed uh, 10 years ago, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the volume of trade that time was about 30 billion of US dollars. So we have a huge potential. Sure. Uh, that, uh, that is my point. Yeah, uh -huh. I think everybody that, that follows this issue um, mm -hmm. is just astounded at how much potential is mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. It's just stymied, it's mm -hmm. just not, it's not gelling well. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I completely agree mm -hmm. with you that this, this cohesion that really mm -hmm. needs to occur at the human level mm -hmm. really is the foundation. And I was really surprised at the protests in Moscow mm -hmm. about the discussions about the return of the islands. How mm -hmm. how um, against it mm -hmm. were the, were the Russian people, mm -hmm. and similarly the, the the Japanese people too. So yes, there's a, a lot mm -hmm. of of coming to mm -hmm. together that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about the trade flow between mm -hmm. uh, Russia mm -hmm. and and Japan mm -hmm. and the the lack of I mean the the very small number of Russians that are here that are operating businesses mm -hmm. and Japanese that are in in the uh, mm -hmm. the country manufacturing or doing things, mm -hmm. it just seems for the size of the two countries, it's just, mm -hmm. it's not representative of what should be there. What yes, do you think? Uh, Timothy, I would agree with you, but uh, I would like to respond to, to, to your remark, which, uh, if I understood it correctly, uh, was about your sort of a surprise over the protests in Russia uh, about uh, the uh, negotiations mm -hmm. between Russia and Japan over what you call uh, islands issue. Again, we negotiate uh, about peace treaty, but uh, the, the origin of the problem of the peace treaty between Russia and Japan is in the results of the Second World War. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, your country, my country were allies at that time. Uh, and we together fought uh, against Nazi Germany and uh, its satellites, one of which, unfortunately, was Japan. Right. Of course, uh, saying Japan, I don't mean the present-day Japan. I mean past Japan, that Japan that existed in the 30s and 40s of the last century. And for the Russian society, for Russian people, uh, the the... Uh, sovereignty over, over the Kuril Islands, which uh, uh, the country obtained as a result of the Second World War in accordance with uh, uh, the Soviet, American and British agreements, uh, is uh, a part of that big war mm -hmm. uh, that the country uh, was uh, conducting against Nazi Germany and its allies for four, for four years. And uh, for the victory, for the victory in which it 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 lost uh, during to the late in accordance with the latest estimation, mm -hmm. uh, twenty seven millions of million of human lives, and uh, this is why uh, our society yes. is very very sensitive to mm -hmm. this issue. Well, the, I think the reason why I was so surprised mm -hmm. is because in the past that mm -hmm. human element didn't really hit my radar mm. very much. Maybe mm -hmm. it was because the mass media didn't mm. report on it that much. Yes, but, it, it, but, didn't, it did not, yeah. Yes, but mm. what I noticed was that the passion that's that's associated with, mm. with those islands, and as mm -hmm. you said, you know, the, the loss of human life mm. during the Great War, yes, that's that's something that mm. people, people yeah. can't forget. Yeah, yeah. So now about uh, trade, etc. Right. Uh, okay, uh, well, first of all, I would like to uh, emphasize that uh, Russia is a very reliable trade partner. Uh, you, you, I'm sure you, you, you've heard a lot uh, about uh, Russian uh, exports of natural gas to Europe, uh, which is growing uh, despite all the obstacles created by certain countries mm -hmm. uh, against it. But uh, we are a reliable supplier of strategically important uh, in energy resources, not only in Europe, but also here in Asia Pacific. Uh, for instance, uh, about 9 or 10 percent of uh, the consumption of LNG, LNG in Japan is, huge, right. is covered by Russia mm -hmm. uh, from, uh, a pl L for, from an LNG plant uh, located in the south part of Sakhalin, Sakhalin Island. 
And so uh, I would like to emphasize, first of all, that we are a reliable trade partner uh, with Japan. And uh, we want to see, of course, more and greater uh, mutually beneficial uh, trade uh, with uh, Japan. Uh, to, 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 uh, we, we export here not only L, the LNG, but also crude oil, also aluminum. A lot of minerals. Uh, right. Yeah, a lot of uh, diamond, uh, mm -hmm. etc. Diamonds, etc. It's uh, timber, uh, coal, uh, etc. And uh, uh, we think that uh, there are many opportunities uh, for further development of our trade and investment cooperation. Mm -hmm. Uh, for instance, now uh, more than 220 Japanese companies uh, have uh, their offices in uh, various parts of Russia, in Moscow, Petersburg, Vladivostok, Khabarovsk, etc. And uh, we are uh, now uh, launching uh, new uh, projects, uh, new uh, types of business activity. And uh, one of the examples is uh, engine plant of uh, Mazda Corporation, Matsuda Corporation in Vladivostok, where it produces engines for the cars assembled here in Japan. So it's a new supply chain mm -hmm. which we create now. So we have uh, many opportunities uh, in uh, doing business, mutually beneficial business, including in uh, the innovation area. For instance, a couple of weeks ago here in Tokyo, we organized a presentation of the Russian Strategic Initiatives Agency. It's an NGO uh, which is uh, working under, under the guidance of President Putin and which task is to uh, implement innovations, you know, innovation policy in the Russian regions, in the Russian mm -hmm. industries. And together with JETRO, we, we organized a very interesting seminar uh, a couple of weeks ago here in Tokyo which confirmed once again uh, great prospects for mm -hmm. mutually beneficial cooperation. You're not stopping there, though. I mean, uh, this year has been tagged the, the year mm -hmm. of, of cultural exchange as well. Mm -hmm. And you've got a lot of activities that are going on between yeah. uh, Russia yeah. and Japan to, to yeah. blend or to, to share these two yeah. cultures. Quite right you are. But uh, what uh, do you say? It's not actually a, a culture cross here. It's uh, broader than just a culture. Uh, exchange because uh, the project you mentioned is uh, called its official title is uh, crossing years of Russia and Japan they include uh, culture they include tourism they include science and technology they include economic cooperation uh, they include even military military exchange etc etc uh, and the start of uh, this program uh, crossing year program uh, was uh, done uh, last May mm -hmm. in Moscow on the stage of the historic Bolshoi Theater uh, by President Putin and Prime Minister Abe. And uh, it was, uh, there was also a great uh, picturesque performance of Japanese traditional arts on the Bolshoi, uh, Bolshoi Theater's stage uh, on the 26th of May. Uh, last year in Moscow. And uh, in total we have about 400, uh, 400 events uh, which are uh, included in the program of uh, this year. Again, it's also about culture. For instance, uh, Russian National Orchestra, Mariinsky Ballet, mm -hmm. uh, uh, many other Kabuki uh, theater from Japan and other prominent uh, prominent musicians, uh, prominent artists uh, performed uh, respectively in Russia and Japan. Uh, then uh, we had such, an, such events as Russian, uh, Japanese universities, rectors uh, forum uh, last May in Sapporo. Uh, we, even uh, the event which I mentioned, the, the innovation forum, here in Tokyo was also a part of uh, crossing years. So, and we have a very interesting program ahead. And the president mm -hmm. will be visiting uh, Tokyo as well? Uh, well, we are, uh, it is now under discussion with okay. our Japanese partners. Very helpful So, for that. and we hope that uh, we will successfully 
uh, realize uh, the program of the crossing years and uh, the crossing years, the closing ceremony will take place here in Japan during President Putin's visit uh, to uh, Japan in the end of June in connection with uh, the G20 summit in Osaka. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was my pleasure. A fascinating discussion on Russian-Japan relations, how deep they are, where they're going in the future. We're going to continue to follow this. You should too. Please stay tuned.